in a second. Looks like everyone's going to be right on there. And it looks like the speed with which you went says to me, you really know your prefixes. So let's see real quick, we're going to go over the answers real quickly. I'm going to ask you to correct your own. I'm just going to read down the choices. And we're going to take a look at one. There was one on there that I thought might be a little tricky. So let's go down very quickly and correct first. Re. Play. Play. Replay, right. Under. Age. age. What would be the next one? Misprint. Miss uh huh. The next one? Disable. Ah, we're going to come back and look at that one in a moment. Mark that one as because actually, yeah, mark that one because that's the one we're going to come back and look at in a moment. The next one would be preheat. Pre mm -hmm. the, the next one? Rewind. Rewind. Yeah. Go ahead. Next one? Dishonest. Good. Next. Mistreat. Mm -hmm. Untie. Untie. Yeah, untie. Next one? Underwater. Good. Unhappy. Unhappy. Yep, unhappy. And the last one? Preview. Preview. Okay, so that dis and un, that can be a little confusing because they both mean what? What do they both mean? Not. Not, right. And the fourth one, the one I had you mark, able. I had you mark that one because is disable a word? No. Yes. Yeah, it is. I have a couple of people who realize that disable is a word, but so is unable. And the, the prefix this means what again? Not. Not. But so does un. When we talk about not able, if you are not able to do something, have you done it before? Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, you haven't ever done it. You can't do it, right? When we talk about disabling something, that not changes a little bit. Think about this. I disabled the TV so no one could watch it. What did I do to the TV? You made it so that you broke it into small pieces. Okay, maybe I broke it into small pieces. Yeah. What else might I have done to it? Unplugged it. Unplugged it, right. I made it not able to work, but it's something I did to it, isn't it? And that's why on the fourth one, the correct answer is unable, okay? Not able, like you've never done it, rather than making it not possible to work again, okay? So, great job, everybody. I think you guys have that. We are not going to worry about those prefixes anymore then. Um, today, what we're going to do is we're going to start a new book, and I want you to think about spies. What are spies? And what do you know about being a spy? Before we share as a group, I'd like you to turn to your partner. Okay, two of you. Three. Tell your partner what you think a spy is and or something you know about spies. I'm going to give you about one minute to share with each other, and then we'll come back as a group to share. Go ahead, go. I think a spy is, I think sometimes spies someone who does not want to be called that. Okay. One thing from each of your groups that you came up. What are spies? One thing that you shared with your partner. Um, she said that um, spies use pins, invisible pins. So ah. um, they won't see the messages. Okay, so secret messages. Can you share something that Caden told you? Caden said that um, people you the spies you um, they sneak up on people mm -hmm. and they stop people. Okay, so very sneaky. Something um, that your partner shared with you. She said that the spies um, um, want to do something good. Okay, they maybe want to do something to make something. All right. I think spies are people who don't want to be ca caught. Uh-huh, they don't want to be caught. Lots of good information on spies, and all right on um, as you look at that. And that we're talking about because we are going to be looking today at a book called Spy Devices. Spy Devices. What does the word device, 
just looking at the title here and the picture and thinking about your conversation, what do you think spy devices are, Kaden? Like gadgets or like computers? Gadgets, computers, can we think of, of another term that maybe a word we could replace devices with? Kaden's right on, they're gadgets, they might be a computer. Cameras? Cameras, that's an example of a device. Can you think of another word that would define device? Um, an object used to um, make something. Okay. Tool. Yeah, tool. Right, an, an object used to make things, to spy on people. And you guys gave some really great examples of spy tools. This story that we're going to read is a nonfiction text. So as we do our walkthrough before we start reading, what types of things in the text do we want to look at to help us understand it better? Think back to class and our lessons on nonfiction texts. What kinds of things do we watch for? Um, the title and like the genre. Okay, we want to pay attention to the title and the genre. What else in the text do we want to look at? We want to see if we want to see things as true. Right, we're going to be looking for facts. How about text structures? What kind of structures or features do we want to look at as we're reading a nonfiction text? Tight. We've already mentioned the title. What else? What kind of features does a nonfiction text have that we want to make sure we read and look at to give us an idea of what this book is about? Photographs. Photographs. Yeah. Mm. As I'm opening this page, there's some clues on this page that will help you with that. Mm -hmm. Glossaries. Glossaries, yeah. Table of contents. Table of contents. What are these? What do we call these? Bits? Yeah. Subtitles. Subtitles. Do you have another word for that? What? Subheadings. Subheadings, right. All of those things. So we're going to take a quick look through the book. We're going to do a walkthrough to make sure we understand what this book's about before we start reading. To get us started, I'd like you to turn to the back cover on the inside. Okay. I want you to take a moment to read that to yourself, and then we're going to turn to our partners again and share what we, what interesting thing we learned from that or made us think of wonder about the book. Okay. So take about one minute to read. sharing right away. Okay. You're done reading as well? Okay, go share. One thing that you found really interesting or made you wonder, hey, I wonder if we'll learn about this in the book. What did you find interesting? Listening to you talking, I heard a lot of the same things. But what are those tools, and what might be new and coming up? How many of you watch spy shows on TV? Have you ever watched spy shows on TV? What kind of gadgets and tools do they use that don't really exist yet? Can you think of some? Uh, like speaking things, like you can change your voices. Okay, so there's like, some voice changing technology. Yeah. Lasers. Lasers. Mm -hmm. We have some lasers, don't we? But they use them in ways that we haven't seen yet, have we? Um, the goggles that you put on your eyes and that you see in the mirror. 
Okay. Now, that happens on TV, but guess what? That's in real life, too. We're going to hear about that in this book a little bit. Okay. So as we get started, I'd like you to take a look at the back cover. I'm going to read to you this one. It says, searching for secrets can be difficult, even deadly. But spies have tools to help them find, store, and send important information. Some of the tools are high-tech, and some are low-tech. But they all help spies do their dangerous jobs. Wow. I didn't ever think about this, but why might spying be dangerous? Why might spying be dangerous, you think? Because if somebody sees the spies, um, their reputation... Okay, their reputation might be like, at stake. Kind of exciting, but she said, but, um, like, my cover would be blown. Okay, their cover might be blown. And why might that be dangerous, though? If you were spying on someone and they figured it out, why might that be dangerous? We'll take one more and then we're going to... They would probably um, be fighting them and they would maybe have like um, um, dangerous tools, mm -hmm. like, like guns. And yeah, yeah, they may end up in a fight, yeah. So we're going to take a look at this, at this book and look at some of the tools that spies have used in the past, but also things that are coming up in the future about some of those new technologies. We're going to remember that technology that spies use is always changing. Okay? It never stays the same. And as we look in the book on page, let's take a look at page eight and nine. We'll do a quick walk through the book before we read independently. What kind of tools or devices are we learning about on those two pages? Jessica? Um, that they have like those earphones that can um, hear other people's conversations. Okay, so you're looking at the picture and seeing those earphones. What else, how else, what else might we look at to know what we're going to learn about on this page? Um, that right here, it has the lady and she has the earphones too, but she's looking through a camera. Mm -hmm. Okay, remember we talked about those text features that help us know what we're going to read about? And on this page, there are headings. What do the headings tell us? What are we going to learn about on this page? What do we, what do we call those listening devices? Those listening devices are tools that they help them see. Mm -hmm. But we're what? using the headings. What are the names of those listening devices? Bugs, bugs and laser microphones. Right, bugs and laser microphones. Remember when we're doing a walkthrough and we're trying to get an idea of what a book is about, we look at those headings to help us, as well as the pictures. You started off well there. We still want to use those headings. The one other thing we're going to look at before we start is the sidebar. The sidebar is in purple on this page, and you will see that it says a spy on the wall. When you are reading, you'll want to make sure you read that. I'm just going to give you a real quick overview of it. Because look at that medallion down at the bottom, the picture of the medallion. What does that look like to you? Does it look, does it look dangerous or spy-like? It has the bald eagle on it, has the crest of the United States. Does that look all that dangerous? Mm -hmm. Here's the amazing thing about that, and you're going to read a look. That was a gift from the Soviet Union. The Soviet Union is what we now call Russia. Why do you think Russia spies would give the U.S. a gift like that? Take a moment and take a look at that sidebar and see if you can figure it out. Why did they give us a gift? We weren't friends when they gave us that gift. Oh, yeah. 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 We weren't good friends. Why did they give that gift? So they could listen to American secrets um, for like, things that they wanted to yeah. discuss. Yeah. So they didn't. It was a bug, right. There was a bug in it, and they could listen to all of our secrets. It was many years, it seems like from that reading, before the U.S. figured out how Russia was getting all of our information. Okay, so we're going to learn about some things like that in the book. Um, what I would like you to do now for a moment before we start is turn and talk to your partner Thinking about that gift, what does that make you think about spies and about the business of spying? Does it raise any questions for you? Maybe you want to a question and share it with your partner, and then we're going to move on. Um, mm -hmm. How can they put 
Okay, so I threw some really good questions that you're going to keep in mind as you're reading. How they make them, why do they want, what kind of information are they trying to get? Okay, keep those questions in mind. There's one last thing I want to talk about before you start reading independently, and that is secret codes. And Yakita, you touched on it a little while, a little bit earlier with that secret pen, that invisible pen that you have, right? Have you ever written in a secret code? Yeah, have you, Kaden? Yeah, why? Why do people write in secret codes? Why might that be useful? Mm -hmm. So people won't get in their business. Okay, so someone can't get into your business? No. Has anyone heard about the code writers? I think it was for, it's either World War I or World War II. There was a movie recently. I know a lot of kids have seen that, but. Have you seen, did you, did you see a movie about, I think World War I or II, about the code writers and the code breakers? And they sent all of these messages back and forth, and nobody could read them unless they could figure out the code. Do you know what a code is? Before? What does that mean when I write it in a code? Something that you have to figure out, mm -hmm. and then you figure it out, you get to get in it. Yeah, you have to figure it out. So for example, if I wanted to write a code, I might assign numbers to each letter. Right? And then I'd write my code in numbers, and someone would have to know what number goes with what letter to figure it out, right? So we're going to do some reading a little bit about, about codes as well, and see how those were used by spies. As you read, I'm going to give you a note card. We're going to read independently. I'm going to listen to you read a little bit and talk about some vocabulary as we read. While you're reading, what I would like you to do is to think about um, why these devices and spies are important to countries, okay? And why people spy. What does the book tell us about what's in, why people spy and why that's important to a country, okay? Does anyone have something? Okay, great. So we're going to spend the next 10 or 15 minutes just reading. When I come to you, I'm going to ask you to read aloud, and we'll talk about vocabulary and things as we go along, okay? You can begin at the beginning. When we read a nonfiction text, we make sure that we don't read just the words. What else do we read? The titles, the headings, your captions, sub yep, subheadings, everything. Text boxes, everything. Very good. Okay, go ahead and begin, and I'm going to get started listening, okay? I'm going to start with you. You can start here. A government spy is a person hired by a country to obtain secret information about other countries. Throughout history, countries around the world have used spies to find out information that could help protect their citizens from danger. During wartime, for example, spies are used to learn, to learn at an enemy's secret plans. Spies are have diff have a difficult plan. Have a difficult, often dangerous job. They have an, to uncover important information, information that can affect many, li many lives, and do it without being discovered themselves. You've probably seen spies in the movies. They are, they are always smart and good looking, and they use all kinds of fantastic gadgets. Incredible cars, deadly weapons, hidden in their shoes, tiny cameras and microphones, x-ray glasses, and even jetpacks that let them fly out of danger. When I was reading this by myself, I don't really stop there and think about those movie spies. What does that make you think about movie spies? Does it seem realistic? It seems realistic. It does seem realistic, so that realistic have jetpacks and jumping, I think, what did it say here? Um, really fancy cars that do all sorts of crazy things, yeah? Okay. And gadgets, it mentioned gadgets here as well. 